Number 9, question on equilibrium, silver and iron 2. So we try to form an equation or a equilibrium table in terms of the number of moles, initial change and final or initial change equilibrium. And then we fill in the info whatever we have from the, from the question so far. We have one mole, one mole of iron, 2 plus, so 1, 1, nothing is formed here. Now, this is important, silver is a solid. So eventually we are calculating the concentration to put into the Kc. So a solid concentration is fixed. So it will not be uh, reflected in the expression here. So we do not need to put a number here. The change, we look at the final amount. We have 0 0.44 moles of silver. So the change will be from one mole, it decreases by 0 0.56. This will be important, it affects all the rest of the changes. We will have 0 0.56 used up for iron 2 plus and then 0 0.56 of iron 3 plus form. We take the difference, this is the equilibrium amount of iron 2 plus and equilibrium amount of iron 3 plus. Now this is a number of moles. We, when we put inside Kc, we have to be careful because Kc is in terms of concentration. So 0 0.56, we have to divide by the volume of the solution. In this case, it is conveniently given to us as 1. If it wasn't, you will realize that um, it will actually change it from 0 0.56 to another number. So do watch out for the volume also. 0 0.44, 0 0.44 over 1. And then if you work this out in your calculator, 0.56 divided by 0.44 square, you get 2.89. Iodine and hydrogen, hydrogen iodide, this is endothermic. What change will cause the purple color to be paler? It means we want to use some conditions to shift the equilibrium to the right side. Looking at the temperature, this is endothermic. If we increase the temperature, we will shift the equilibrium to the right. We will use up the purple color, iodine, and then the color will be paler. If you are wondering about pressure, you can check that there are two moles of gas on the left side and then two moles of gas on the right side. So changing the pressure will not shift the equilibrium in this case. If the solid line is 500 kelvins and the dotted line is 300, right, this is the higher temperature. So its peak will be to the right side but lower. So 500 kelvins, solid line, 300 dotted. In the higher temperature, we expect the peak to be on the right side and at the lower level. So this is the graph that represents the conditions. Number 12, a lot of info, but essentially they are telling us that the enzymes speed up the reaction and then it speeds up the reaction because it's a catalyst and it lowers the activation energy. Okay, so just a simple concept on how does a catalyst um, speed up reaction. Number 13, which element shows the greatest tendency to form some covalent compounds? If you remember, aluminium can form ionic, aluminium can also form covalent compounds. Why so? Because covalent compounds, for example, like aluminium chloride. Okay. Why so? Because aluminium has a very high charge density, 3 plus. So what it will do is it will be able to attract the electron cloud of the negative ions and pull it towards itself. 
so much so that it becomes sharing already. And when we share electrons, it is a covalent nature. So aluminium has the greatest tendency among these options. Fourteen. Again, quite a bit of info. If we were to digest the information, it's saying that we have 1,000 million tons of limestone and another 200 million tons of limestone roasted. So, what is the equation? The limestone is calcium carbonate. When it's roasted, it becomes carbon calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This is a lime. So, in total, we have 100 1,200 million tons million tons and they're asking how many million tons of carbon dioxide is coming out so essentially it's a more calculation question to make it more convenient I'll change the million tons to grams so it's easier to handle and then we work out how many grams of carbon dioxide do we get so most of calcium carbonate grams divided by the MR okay, we have 12 moles if it's um, 1,200 grams that will give us the same as your carbon dioxide because 1 is to 1 so we visualize that this is 12 moles we multiply by its MR we will have 527 grams for carbon dioxide okay and then of course if you change back to million tons it's 527 million tons Fifteen decomposition of group 2 nitrates um, this kind of question is pretty popular it keeps appearing over and over again so it will be good to be familiar with it we have 5 grams of a nitrate and then it loses 3.2 grams or 29 grams after heating. So 5 grams of a nitrate, it loses the mass is due to the loss or the production of the gases. Okay, what this gives us is eventually we take the difference, we will have the amount of the oxide left over, the solid, one point. 71 grams now we will be making use of these two species notice that the number of moles they have are the same two moles will produce two moles so if you were to change the grams into the respective moles we take 5 grams for your nitrates divide by the MR of X which we don't know and the nitrates which is 1, 2, 6 Okay, you add up nitrogen, oxygen, multiply by 2. Then we equate it to the mass of your oxide divided by the MR. X plus oxygen, which is 16. Now we have this equation. We will just have to solve for X using your, your maths uh, concept. Okay. If you're uncomfortable with solving, what you can do is you replace all their respective MRs into X here and see which numbers give you the equation the same on left and right. In this case, the answer is calcium. So if you substitute 40 into your x, you realize that the equation will work out. Right, so either, either do by trial and error, or you solve by maths, the maths approach. Sixteen, we have electrolysis of sodium chloride, um, brine, which is concentrated. So on one side, between your sodium plus and your water, we will get your water being discharged as hydrogen gas. On the other side, we have chlorides and water. Because it's higher concentration, we will get chlorine gas also discharged. Okay. Now the thing is, we have sodium hydroxide left over in your electrolyte. So, and they say that the products were stirred so that they can react with each other. So chlorine 
and sodium hydroxide actually reacts with each other. Under cold conditions, chlorine and your sodium hydroxide will form sodium chloride and sodium chlorate. Plus 1, minus 2, okay, your chlorate is a plus 1 oxidation number here. So what we eventually get, the pair that is among the major products, we have our hydrogen and then we actually have our chlorate 1 because these two will react to form your chlorate 1.